state law right now does not require agencies that administer these, administer these tax credits and exemptions to report the return on investment. So some of these exemptions may be perfectly good. They may be bringing in business to the state. We don't know that because the state doesn't track to see if, these, if we're actually getting any kind of bang for the buck. And uh, if Katrina Jackson gets here, she can tell you about the bill that actually would go a long way towards to, to giving us a little bang for the buck. Um, another problem identified by the auditor's report, and this was a great report, is that state law doesn't uh, allow for the identification of the companies that benefit from these tax breaks. Yeah. So, um, and, and it identified a number of these breaks where just a few uh, companies, fewer than five companies, get the lion's share of the benefits. And I'm just going to read for you here. Uh, the motion picture investor tax credit cost the state $20.7 million in 2009, um, and 78% of that, $16 million, went to just five entities. But the identity of those five entities that got these $16 million in tax breaks is kept secret under state law. Um, so, and this is true for, for a number of, of the biggest tax breaks, uh, and, and the auditor's report will give you a list of them. In many cases, it's just four or five big corporations, big entities that get the lion's share of these million dollar tax breaks. And uh, we, we don't know which. No, you can, uh, you can file a public records request and it will get denied if you want to know who, who benefited from, from these tax breaks. So, um, so in other words, if you're a nonprofit organization and you get a $10,000 earmark in the budget, then uh, you are listed by name and you have an audit report that you file and you have all kinds of record keeping requirements for that $10,000. But if you get a $10 million tax exemption from the state of Louisiana, uh, you and I are not allowed to find out who that company is and why they're getting it or, um, or whether the state is getting any return for their investment. So that's state law. And then finally, I just want to talk about you know why all of this is important. Um, I think it's important because not only is our budget in bad shape right now, but it's going to be in worse shape. And there's a lot of uh, things on the horizon uh, for this budget that, that uh, you know, things are going to get worse before they get better for the budget picture in this state. A couple of reasons. One, um, the budget situation in Washington. There was a budget deal uh, crafted over the summer um, to extend the payroll tax. and. As part of that deal is something called sequestration, where there's going to be automatic across-the-board cuts to federal spending starting in January. Uh, the preliminary estimates are that that's going to cost Louisiana $150 million a year in federal money. Closer to home, we have the governor's retirement package. Uh, initially, the uh, increase in employee contributions that, that he was going to require was going to be used to fund other parts of the budget, but the governor has changed his mind on that. So uh, now that money is going to be going, the extra money that state employees are going to be paying is going to be going into the UAL, and consequently there's going to be a $75 million hole in the budget that they have to fix. And, and then you also have the Revenue Estimating Conference. Uh, we're not going to know until May, but all the indications are uh, that we're going to have actually less revenue than is in the current forecast. That could be anywhere from 50 to $150 million. So you're looking at just this year alone, probably another $300 million um, problem in, in the budget, and, uh, and we're not looking uh, at the revenue side. Everything for the last four years has been centered on what you can cut, and our main argument is that um, you know, we've, we've cut a lot in the last four years, but there's a real revenue problem in this state, and the first place to look instead of raising income taxes or raising taxes across the board is to look at these 464 uh, exemptions that are on the books. Um, we're certainly not saying that all of them are bad and that uh, some of them I think are probably excellent, but they all need to be reviewed. They all need to be looked at for uh, their cost benefit, whether the state is getting uh, its bang for the buck. And uh, the bright side of this is that Governor Jindal was asked about tax loopholes when he was in New Orleans a few weeks ago. Now, he was asked about President Obama's plan to uh, cut corporate taxes and eliminate loopholes, and uh, the governor actually came out and said that he was against tax loopholes, he was against picking winners in the tax code, and uh, so I think, you know, there may be, 
you know, maybe I'm being too optimistic, but there probably is a political opening there because I think this is one of those things where Republicans and Democrats ought to be able to agree that um, that there's too many special favors tucked in to the tax code, and and hopefully uh, they can agree um, with Representative Jackson that there needs to be more transparency and more of a cost-benefit analysis.